All right, well, good morning. Welcome to Cornerstone Baptist Church, and uh, looking forward to uh, what the Lord has for us today. And we may have some more joining us here in a moment, but um, we're going to go ahead and pray, um, and then uh, take any prayer requests and pray. And I'll turn it over to uh, our speaker and uh, the Thread family. We've known them for a while, and uh, looking forward to what the Lord's laid on their heart to share with us. And they have a table in the lobby. If you want to stop by that, there is some of their music and CDs available. So please stop by and um, see what you would like to buy from the table. And uh, please be in the spirit of prayer. Be in the spirit, spirit of prayer, prayer throughout the services today and also for the revival service this week. And we'll have more to say about that in the Sunday morning service. But does anybody have any prayer request to add to the prayer list this morning before we pray? Anybody have any prayer requests? Yes, ma'am. She, you did tell me that, that rehab facility on the south side, right, south side. So I'll be in prayer for her. Pray for Hannah Horace, um, this young lady that normally sits in the back there, Barbara Miller's daughter. She went to the emergency room several days ago and um, was, was there for um, just real bad virus, stomach virus that she's had for over a week, couldn't kick. And then she was placed in a... Um, neurodiagnostic facility because she was having hallucinations and stuff. So I don't know what exactly is going on. Just pray for Hannah Horace that she has a, a full recovery. And um, any other prayer requests? Any other prayer requests to add? Update? Anything at all? Okay, we'll go ahead and pray and then we'll introduce the speaker and turn it over to Brother Thrym. Heavenly Father, we love you, Lord. Thank you for this day you've given us. Thank you for keeping us safe as gathered today. I pray that you be with all those that are on our prayer list that need your touch, that need your healing, Lord. Please be with Miss Redding as she's uh, recovering. And I pray that you would just allow her body to kick out that uh, virus that's there. And I pray that you would strengthen her. We'll be, be with the transition time. I know it's going to be a uh, challenge to be independent and then now going to a assisted living facility. I pray that you make that transition smooth, Lord. And I pray that you'd also be with Hannah Horace who's dealing with some health complications, Lord, I pray you'd be with her, and I pray that also you'd be with um, Mrs. Ledbetter, she's still recovering from her shoulder surgery, and just please be with the, the family of um, Emily, who the young lady who just passed away, I pray you'd be with her family and help her to uh, help them to begin to heal from that, Lord, be with uh, Stephanie and Austin as they try to be a help and a blessing to the family during this time, Lord, and I pray you'd be with Matt, Matt Price's nephew, uh, who just lost his fiance? be with her family, Lord, and just, I pray that you just please work it out, Lord, and just he heal where it's needed, and I pray that you would just speak to our hearts today, Lord, to the preaching, to the singing, and that they would leave here challenged and having heard from you, and uh, be with all those on the prayer list that, that need you, Lord, that are sick, that are hurting, that have loved ones that need to be saved, and I pray that you would just work in their behalf, and we love you, and we thank you, and praise you, in Jesus' name. All right, well, Brother Thren is going to come and bring the message, and I'll let you introduce your family, maybe tell a little bit of background of your ministry, and um, looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you, preacher. Good morning. Good to see each one here this morning, and uh, thankful for the opportunity to be here. Looking for a great, great time together. In God's Word and just enjoying the things of God together. And uh, it is good to be saved, isn't it? Amen. Amen. Well, uh, my name is Mark Thren. I'm an evangelist uh, from New Brunswick, Canada. 
has anybody been to new brunswick here outside of my family anybody new brunswick we got oh we got a new brunswick visitor right but you're yeah you you visited there and um, so new brunswick is right next to maine so it's all the way on the east coast and um, we've lived there in canada we've lived in canada for about 15 years i'm originally from michigan don't hold that against me here in indiana but uh met my wife up there in canada she and her family grew up there we were married in uh, 1997 and there's my wife rachel uh, down here sitting on the second row and some of our children some of them are in uh, classes uh, but uh, bethany is here and melody raise your hand so the other people can see it not just me i know who you are already and behind melody is joanna caitlin and timothy and uh, the rest of them around here somewhere and we'll introduce them when they get in here maybe um, in the next service but uh, we are in evangelism i pastored in canada for several years and in 2017 uh, the lord called us into evangelism and uh, primarily we have ministered in the northeast uh, that is uh, uh, where our burden lies uh, but we do get out here to the midwest every now and again and we get down south a little bit and um, to enjoy some warm weather before we have to go back to the snow amen but uh, we are thankful to be here and i do want to take a little time this morning uh, as i teach uh, the, the lesson i want to also kind of introduce you to our ministry and um, we do have prayer cards on the back table if you would pick up a prayer card pray for us we have uh, our family prayer card and then next summer we're launching a new ministry called evangelize new brunswick and uh, new brunswick is in size about the size of south carolina has about 850,000 people and it has about six or seven king james bible baptist churches and so uh, very few that uh, are preaching the bible uh, as we believe it and um, and so there's a great need in our province for the gospel and for uh, churches and um, some of the facts about new brunswick you'll find on that card and uh, one of the things that uh, is really concerning to us is uh, and it's happening in, in the U.S. as well, the, uh, the spike in, in people that believe uh, or don't believe in, in God in any way. Atheism is on the rise. And in, in the, uh, from the 2001 to 2011 census in Canada, they do it every 10 years. I'm sorry, from 2011 to 21. Um, uh, in, in that 10-year time, uh, those describing themselves as not religious has over doubled uh, from 16% to 34% of, of Canadians now will identify as not religious in any way. And um, there's a, a great need for the gospel. We know that the gospel is the only thing that's going to work. It's the only thing that's going to help. Uh, it's the only thing that's going to... Uh, save souls and reclaim lives and bring revival uh, to nations. And so uh, we are, are uh, uh, launching that ministry next summer. Our goal is to preach in every town, in every community, every incorporated community in the province of New Brunswick. Hold gospel meetings, get out gospel literature. We want to cover every area of, of that province. And, um, and so next summer, uh, beginning next year in the summer months, June, July, and August, uh, we are clearing our travel schedule uh, to minister in New Brunswick and to hold gospel campaigns and gospel rallies and uh, get, get the gospel out. And that's really, uh, I don't know how long that's going to take. It's probably going to take several years, but we're committed. We want to preach the gospel in every community in our in our province and so pray with us on that pick up a card and i want to kind of tell you a little story and show you how the lord uh, brought us to this place in our ministry uh, to focus in on uh, evangelizing new brunswick 
And so we're going to be in Mark chapter 1 this morning. Mark chapter 1. And we're going to look at um, really a remarkable statement that the Lord makes in this chapter. He's just beginning his ministry. And the Lord is blessing Christ's ministry in a great way. But then he leads him, directs him in a different uh, area, to a different area. And uh, the Lord used these verses to really minister to me and really show me what he wanted next for us. About a year ago, I was praying and just really felt unsettled. Didn't know what the Lord wanted, but I knew he wanted something more out of me. And... Um, and, the, and he brought me to this passage and brought us to this ministry. And we're very excited about it, excited about what the Lord's going to do in New Brunswick. But I want to uh, just take a, a few minutes this morning, look at the scripture, and uh, allow the Lord maybe to challenge your heart the way he has mine. Mark chapter 1, verse number 32. The Bible says, And at even, when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased, and them that were possessed with devils. And all the city was gathered together at the door, and he healed many that were sick of divers diseases, and cast out many devils, and suffered not the devils to speak, because they knew him. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place, and there prayed. And Simon and they that were with him followed after him. When they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. And he said unto them, Let us go into the next towns, that I may preach there also. For therefore came I forth. I want us to think about this statement that the Lord makes here in verse number 38. And I want us to think about these next towns. And uh, what the Lord has to say here, not only to his disciples, but he recorded in scripture so that we could see it as well and be challenged by it as well. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the day you've given us. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for loving us and sending your son to die for us. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be a part of the work of the gospel. And Lord, uh, it's not just uh, preachers. And pastors and evangelists and missionaries, but Lord, each and every one of us who have received Christ as our own personal Savior, we have been enlisted in this mission and given the great commission to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And Lord, I pray that you would help us this morning to see what our part is, and Lord, that we'd be faithful to do our part to take the gospel to the regions beyond. Lord, we'll thank you and praise you for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. If you look at the life of Christ, you know that um, he was sent by his father and he was sent into the nation of Israel. Uh, Israel's in the news, they're always in the news, but especially these days, they're prominent in the news because of the conflict. And it's always amazing to me how anybody could believe or not believe the Bible, even when they just look at the nation of Israel and all that surrounds. There's this little tiny nation uh, in, in, in the world, and yet so much of our world even today revolves around that little spot of the world. And it's because that is the apple of God's eye. And, uh, and so the Lord... Uh, the Heavenly Father sends Jesus to this earth, and, uh, but he does not send him as a world traveler. He sends him to this little nation of Israel, and, um, and, and Jesus will spend uh, the entirety of his ministry ministering in this tiny uh, nation of Israel. And even inside of that small nation, which is, a, a look at, uh, at, at Israel in comparison to Canada, as far as uh, space-wise, Canada is where we are, and uh, land mass, uh, Israel is eight, uh, 8,600 
miles, square miles. That's how big that nation is. Canada is 3.8 million. And, uh, and, and most other countries of the world, they just, they, they dwarf that little nation. And yet, uh, that's where Christ was sent. And yet, even within that small nation, Jesus' ministry during his three and a half years of ministry, um, he, he did not even cover all of that nation, and he did not uh, spend much time outside of a little 12-mile uh, triangle. In Matthew chapter 11, you hold your place there, Mark, go back to Matthew 11. And I want you to look at this and say, where are you going with this, preacher? Well, I'm going somewhere, just hang on. Matthew 11, in verse 20, it's what it says, Then began he to abrade the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they repented not. Woe unto thee, Chorazin! Woe unto thee, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in the day of judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. In these verses, Jesus identifies three uh, communities as, uh, as the places where most of his mighty works were done. And do you see then verse number 20? It says most of his mighty works were done in these three communities. And these three communities form a triangle, about 12 square mile plot of land. And uh, this is where Jesus is going to spend probably 80 to 85 percent of his ministry and do most of his mighty works in this little triangle. As a matter of fact, our text in Mark chapter 1, if you want to turn back there, where we find Jesus in this text is we find him in Capernaum, which will become really the headquarters for his ministry. And he's working there and God's blessing there. And the work's going very well there. And yet, in the midst of all that blessing, in the midst of all those mighty works that he's doing, the Lord Jesus announces to his disciples, you know, we need to go to the next towns. What is he saying? He's saying it's not enough just for us to work here when God is calling us to go beyond here. Now, if, if uh, you know, we're looking at it from a human standpoint, from a ministry standpoint, if we're just looking at it this way, we would say there's no reason for him to leave Capernaum. As a matter of fact, in this text, uh, people are bringing their diseased, their sick, those that were uh, possessed with devils. And uh, verse 33 of Mark chapter 1 tells us all the city was gathered together at the door of the house that he was in. That's, that's a pretty big deal. The whole city's coming to him. Verse 36 um, or verse 37, when they, said, uh, when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. Would you say the ministry is going well at this point? It's going very well. And yet the Lord uh, is moving, the Heavenly Father is moving Christ to go beyond where he is to reach the next towns. And this is something that we all need to be mindful of. If, if the Lord uh, wanted Christ to go beyond uh, his, his normal place of service, then certainly he would have us to do the same. Most of us will spend our lives in, in a certain place and probably do most of our ministering in, in one place. But yet, even though God has called us to a specific place, we cannot allow our vision to just be limited to that one place. That's why the 
missions uh, uh, programs are so important in churches. We need to see beyond. Yes, we need to be busy where God has placed us, but we also need to, to uh, see beyond the need beyond our own community. And as I was uh, praying and reading this passage, the Lord's blessed our evangelistic ministry. We stay very busy, and uh, God's opened a lot of doors. Things are going well. But I realize that I can't just take that as the, uh, the assurance that things need to continue the way they are. That there may be a calling beyond what we're doing now. And I want to challenge you with that this morning as well. Say, so preacher, I'm being faithful to church. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm doing what I should and, and I'm being where I'm supposed to be and that's good and you continue to do that. But you know, we should always have an ear open to what God would have us to do, maybe beyond what we're doing already. Now, I want to look at this statement that Christ makes in verse 38. And we'll just we'll break it down into four parts. And I, I want us to look at this this morning uh, for a little while. The first thing that Jesus says in verse 38, he says this, Let us go. Let us go. And when I read this, and I'm thinking about this statement, the word that comes to my mind is the word participation. You say, what do you mean, preacher? Well, Jesus certainly could have gone to the next towns on his own. He certainly could have done the work in his, uh, by himself without the aid of his disciples. But the Lord is including them in this ministry of taking the gospel beyond uh, their, uh, where they were at that time. And, uh, you know, I'm thankful that the work of the gospel is a work, once again, that all of us who are saved, we have all been called to participate in. And so Jesus here, he certainly could have done this work alone, but he invites his disciples to go with him. He says, let us go. And then also I think about this, not only is Jesus including his disciples uh, in this work of the ministry, but I'm thankful also that he's not just saying, you go and I'll stay here. I'm glad that he participates, amen? And uh, listen, whenever we take the message of the gospel, and wherever we take the message of the gospel, it's good to know that we're not going alone, we're not going in our own strength, that he will lead us and guide us and he'll help us through his spirit. He will empower us to do the work that he's called us to do. I like the, the, the phrase that God uh, will not guide where he will not provide. Amen. Where he guides, he provides. And he's called us. Certainly we have the instruction, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. But when he's sending us, he's sending us with his Holy Spirit. Even though Christ is not here physically, yet he has sent his Spirit to indwell each and every one of us who are saved. And when we go with the message of the gospel, we do not go alone. When the Lord uh, first laid this ministry upon my heart to, uh, to evangelize New Brunswick, um, it really, uh, I, I, I kind of uh, was taken aback by the scope of the uh, project, of the mission. And, uh, and really, one of the first thoughts I had was, I can't do this. This is too big for me. And I'm not able to do this. And you know, the Lord did not uh, disagree with me. He just assured me, though it's too big for you and you're not able to do it, through my strength you are able to do it. We can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth us. Amen? And so this participation, he'll be there to comfort, he'll be there to guide, he'll be there to empower. And, uh, and when we think about the, the, uh, the, 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 the goal, the mission, of taking uh, the gospel into all the world and preaching the gospel to every creature, we certainly cannot do that on our own. 
But I believe if each and every one of us are yielded to the Spirit of God and the leadership of the Holy Ghost, then that can be accomplished. So this word participation, let us go. And then the next statement he makes is this, let us go into the next towns. This really is what got my attention. It got me thinking about the towns and the cities and the, and the villages of our province. When I thought about how many communities have no gospel witness, there's no Bible preaching church there, and in some cases no gospel preaching church there at all of any stripe. If I began to be burdened about this idea of preaching in the next towns. And when you think about this, this phrase, next towns, the next towns, uh, the word that came to my mind was this word, a plan. There's a plan in place. And, uh, you know, spirit-led ministry will not be disorganized. It's not thrown together haphazardly. Um, the, the, the Lord is not the author of confusion. He's a God of order. He's a God of, of organization. Uh, he has a plan in place. Now, he may not reveal to us every step of the plan at the beginning, but he has a plan. And we need to be uh, yielded uh, to his plan. Again, here's Jesus in this ministry at Capernaum, and it's going, I mean, it's, it's going great guns. It's just taken off, and the Lord's really blessing, and people are being helped. And yet in the midst of this, uh, the Lord Jesus says, we need, we need to go to the next towns. Well, how did he come to that conclusion? I understand that, that he is God's son, he's God in the flesh. But you do understand that the way that he lived his life was to set a pattern and an example for us. And we see that he always did those things which pleased the Father. Christ said that he did not come of his own uh, volition. Uh, he came in obedience to his Father's will. He establishes that, especially through the book of John. You see that. And so there is a plan in place, and the Lord Jesus is being submissive to the plan of his Father. You say, how did he know what the Lord wanted him to do? Well, in verse number 35, I believe we find the answer. Verse 35 of Mark 1, it says, And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. The Lord Jesus had a vibrant prayer life. When you think about that, you think, you know, Jesus is God, and he certainly has the mind of God, and, uh, and all of those things, and yet he still took time to pray. You know, if we're not careful as believers, especially mature believers, we'll start thinking we know what to do, we know uh, the plan, we know, uh, we know how things are supposed to be done, we know where they're supposed to be done, when they're supposed to be done, and we, if we're not careful, we will lose that, that communication with the Lord. And uh, no matter how long you've been saved, you still need the, the Holy Spirit to guide you and to direct you. And we are dependent upon the Spirit of God. You never get to a place in your life where you just say, well, I can coast from here on out. I know what to do. No, the Spirit of God is necessary. His leadership is necessary. And here, uh, Jesus goes out to pray. And um, uh, sadly, it seems like many times, uh, the only time we pray real fervently is when there's a problem. And, and I'm thankful that when there are problems, we can pray fervently. And the Lord hears and he cares and he listens. However, it's just as important to pray fervently when things are going well as when they're not going well. Why? Because the Lord is going to lead us and guide us, and we need his daily leadership in our life. And so here the Lord Jesus, even though things are going extremely well, he still is seeking the face of God. 
He's still seeking direction. He is praying. And as he prays, God gives him uh, the, the knowledge of his will to go into the next towns. And, uh, and so, you know, this is how God led us into this ministry, through prayer, through the word of God. That's how God leads in any believer's life. If you, if you have a, a, a question, if you need an answer about something, if any man uh, lack wisdom, let him ask of God, which giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. You know, I'm told that word shall. I have a friend who is a lawyer, and, uh, and he, he told me, he said, the word shall is the most uh, powerful word in, in the judicial system, shall. And, uh, you know, we, we believe uh, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You believe that? Well, then we also need to believe James chapter 1 and verse 5, where it says, If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, and it shall be given him. God wants you to know, uh, have the knowledge of his will more than you want to uh, have the knowledge of his will. And so he's not going to hide it from us, but he will use the avenue of prayer to reveal his will. Here Jesus is guided by the Spirit of God into this, uh, into this next phase of his ministry to go into the next towns. And... Um, our, our goal is to do that in, in New Brunswick. There's five regions in the province, and, um, and uh, we're going to work in each of those regions. One of those regions every summer we'll work in, and we want to preach in every community. You say, why is that, preacher? Because every community needs the gospel. So there's a plan in place, but then notice also in verse 38, he says, let us go to the next towns that I may preach there also. Notice the power of this ministry that Jesus has. It is the preaching of the word of God, the preaching of the gospel. This is what has been chosen to save them that believe. Look in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, if you will. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. When you think about the life of Christ and, and what he's able to do and what he was doing in Capernaum, he certainly could do what no man, no other man could do. He performed miracles, he fed the hungry. He did in, in ways that no one else could do. He certainly had uh, a way that he could reach people, many ways he could reach people. But for him, the power of the ministry was not miracles. It was not signs and wonders. It was the preaching of the gospel. Though he did signs and wonders, the focus was the preaching. He said, this is what the power of God, this is how the power of God is revealed. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, look at verse number, uh, verse number 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. There's something powerful and something life-changing that takes place when the gospel of Christ is preached to a congregation. And there's nothing that can replace the preaching of the Word of God. In these days, it seems with so many, so many churches, they're going to a more, uh, what they call a seeker-friendly model. Basically, if you really want to get down to uh, what, what it really is, they, they have designed the church as a place of entertainment where people are brought in to entertain them and to make them feel good about themselves and we'll have you know we'll have 45 minutes of singing and a little 10 minute sermonette and everybody go home feeling good about themselves listen 
that is not going to get the job done. There is nothing that can replace the preaching of the word of God and the preaching of the gospel of Christ. And so Jesus, when he says, I want to go to the next towns, he doesn't say, I'm going to go there so I can amaze them, uh, so I can do miracles there. Though he will amaze them and though he will do miracles, he's going there to preach the gospel because the preaching is where the power is to change lives. And our goal in, in uh, reaching New Brunswick uh, certainly will go, we'll sing, and we'll probably have some uh, times where we'll feed folks and all that thing. But listen, we're there to preach the gospel. This was Jesus' plan. If this was the power behind Jesus' ministry, then it needs to be the power behind ours. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 4, 5, we preach not ourselves, but Christ. So preaching is powerful. And this is what the Lord said when he was going to the next towns. We're going to preach there. And then let me give you this one, the last thing very quickly. And back in Mark chapter 1 and verse 38, he says, Let us go into the next towns, that I may preach there also, for therefore came I forth. This is the purpose. Of course, this ties in with uh, the, the statement before. He says, The purpose of me coming, the purpose of me uh, coming from heaven to earth, and, and the purpose for me for going from town to town is to preach the gospel. And I want us to think about this for just a few minutes before we close this morning. If the purpose of Christ was to get the gospel out to the world, then that should be our purpose as well. To preach the gospel in the regions beyond. You say, well, preacher, I, I, I'm, I, I'm not, God hasn't called me to go anywhere. Then preach the gospel here. When we think about the next towns, many times we think about missions, we think about the other side of the world, and people go to places we can't physically go. We need to support them uh, with our finances, with our prayers, so they can go in our place. But listen, nobody's coming here in our place. We're here for this place. And so I want to challenge you. I know I, I think we're in, uh, we're in the city of Lawrence. Is that right? Lawrence? How many of you live in Lawrence? A few? Okay, we got other communities here. Anybody live in Indianapolis? Okay. Let me ask you this. That's your town. That's where God's placed you. What are you doing to reach your community? You say, well, preacher, I'm coming to church. That's good. But that's not reaching your community. Well, I'm giving tithes and I'm giving missions. That's good. Please continue to do that. But that's not reaching your community. You know, there are so many ways that we can be a witness for the Lord Jesus. And maybe the Lord's not going to call you to go and hold gospel campaigns in, in your town. But you know what you can do? You can put out gospel tracts. You can go down to the post office. I'm not sure what the laws are here in Indiana. But I do know this. You can, you can pay to, have the, to, to uh, do a, a, a mass mailing. We can put it. You can put a gospel track in every mailbox in your community. You say, "Well, that would cost me something." Yeah, it might. But what a worthy cause to get the gospel out. I don't know what the Lord's going to lay upon your heart to do exactly how He's going to use you to get the gospel out. But I do know He wants to use you to reach the next towns. And so. As the Lord worked in my heart about reaching our, our Samaria, I guess you could say, our town, our province, with the gospel. Why don't you pray how the Lord would speak to you and use you to get the gospel out where you are, in your neighboring town. Maybe there's a place near you that they don't have a gospel witness. 
How would the Lord use you to reach them? Just as Jesus Christ had to have a plan, so we too need to have a plan to reach the, the, the regions beyond us, the next towns, the next communities. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word this morning. Thank you, God, for the challenge. Lord, my heart's challenged afresh and anew. Lord, I don't want to just be coasting through life, consumed with my own things and my own plans. God, how I need to be each and every day yielded to your spirit, to your plan. God, I pray that each and every one of us would have that same spirit, dear God, that same attitude. Lord, how do you want to use me to get the gospel into the next towns? Lord, thank you for the time you've given us. We look forward to the service to follow. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much for that message. And uh, what a tremendous challenge for us to, to reach our town and see if we can do more than what we're doing now. Well, we're going to go ahead and be dismissed, and uh, we'll start the next service at 11 a.m. I want to encourage you to stop by the table and uh, see what they have available on the table, and we'll go ahead and be dismissed, and then we'll reconvene back in here at 11 a.m. Let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. Thank you for this day you've given us. I pray that you would just continue to work on our hearts about what we can do for you, Lord, and do more for you. I pray that you'd be with the next hour. I pray that the singing. I pray that the specials, the preaching would just be exactly what we need to hear. And Lord, we love you. Help us to love, love you more and serve you more. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we'll go ahead and be dismissed.